Hello, everyone. Welcome to my Module 5 teaching memo. The Patriots are still undefeated. Tom Brady looks a little shaky at times, but does just enough to win. I had my grandson all day on Friday. He's three, and the first time he has ever stayed over at our house. We ended our day with ice cream at a place that was closing for the season on Sunday. It's never too late in the year for ice cream. Halloween is Thursday. This year, I think Dr. Laura and I are going out. <laughs> this is to prevent any leftover candy being around the house. I am not good with that kind of temptation. I think I gained about five pounds after last Halloween. Not this year. A um, little housekeeping. Uh, after grading all of the progress monitoring discussion board posts, I was impressed by the depth of many of your responses. Those of you who are who are using the readings and digging for other supporting information are truly getting the most out of this course. The progress monitoring part of response to intervention is the one component least seen in schools. You should now know that there is an empirical process to determining if the students are making adequate progress and that you can have them take part in the charting of it. Um, one area of which I'm concerned is that many of you are not using all of the assigned readings to support your initial post comments. Uh, you also need to insert your opinion as well as show me that you've mastered the module learning targets and answer the discussion board questions. I'm looking for more than a short term paper with citations. Many of you are still struggling with correct APA. Check my comments on your initial post uploads and on your discussion board grade. Um, I sent everyone a remind message uh, that you are to post your initial selected response test without answers so your classmates can take it. That's the whole purpose of this process. Um, this is all part of the developmental process, doing a pilot test, just like they do for large scale tests what questions are working and which ones might not be, so you can adjust. Um, I'm always concerned about people not participating in the group process of taking and giving feedback on the draft tests. This is being graded with the modified discussion board rubric. Remember, what gets graded gets done, especially at the graduate level. Mm -hmm. Uh, many of you will be tempted to write me that people in your group have not taken your tests and given feedback. Some of you already have, saying that, hey, they posted the answers. I can't take this test. Um, uh, as the next module ends, I'll be writing to those students uh, to just a friendly reminder, a little <laughs> kick in the butt, <laughs> uh, to take your test. For those good Samaritans, and there are many of you, when you finish with everyone in your group, check out groups where there may be uh, poor response, poor response uh, posts. It won't hurt to take and give feedback to more than five people. Um, of course, to get an A plus, you need to give uh, feedback to nine people um, because you're posting your own test counts as one post. Remember that you need to give feedback that is actionable. We talked about that uh, in the module four. That was part of the one of the learning objectives uh, is how to give feedback that's actionable. Telling someone their test was wonderful might feel good, <laughs> but it doesn't help to make it better. Giving feedback is a skill that is shown to increase student achievement, and it's also part of the assessment portion of all of your ed TPAs, special ed, elementary literacy, and early education. So giving feedback, if you haven't taken uh, the uh, TPA yet or done it, you know, you need to be able to give actionable feedback to your students. Uh, there's a big difference between criticism, which only points out what is wrong, and supportive feedback, which points students in the right direction and helps them answer that third question, how do I close the gap? Make sure you read Wiggins. Uh, we I mentioned this before, the seven keys to effective feedback. There's also another article by Saras in module four, I believe. So um, keep referring back to those. I would download those and keep them in a special folder <laughs> for how I can be a better teacher.
All right, module five. In this module, you began creating, uh, began the test creation process. Most everyone followed my instructions to just post your first draft in the discussion board and your answers with feedback in the second discussion board. Um, not, not the second discussion board, but in your response posts. Those who didn't shall remain nameless. <laughs> Some of one, at, at only one person cut and pasted their test into the text box, which uh, I'm amazed at because uh, in pre previous semesters, many people did that. And that's kind of useless because the formatting does not stay uh, when you cut and paste it in the text box. So, so download the tests, take them, repost them with feedback. Um, it appears that some of you did not read the item writing guidelines in Chapui and Stiggins, uh, Chapter 5, Popham, Chapter 6, and or Clay, uh, uh, pages 13 to 33. Uh, I've made the same corrections in many of them, specifically when it comes to the fill-in section. According to Chapui and Stiggins, you should write out propositions and then leave one key word, word blank. There should be enough information in the, set, in the sentence that a knowledgeable person would be able to answer the question. Uh, and some of them, you're just counting on people looking at your learning target and knowing what the heck your, your questions are asking. <laughs> um, you ha you, they have to be able to be answerable, um, separate of everything. So um, include all the information in those questions. Multiple choice items, they need to be in the form of a question. Many of you are just leaving uh, either an apostrophe at the end or a blank at the end um, and asking them to fill in with one of the choices. Ask a question. It's very easy to reformat that. I've done it for some of you in the form of a question. Um, you should watch my formatting the selected response test video for assistance. Also, matching should be in two columns. I've already seen several that have the the questions here and the um, answers underneath. Um, you need to watch my creating the matching section video. Some of you have referred to that in your feedback. Thank you. You are wonderful. <laughs> um, they, all should, they also should be similar items. So some of you tried to mix targets into your matching. Um, if they're not similar, I mean, it's possible to do that, but they, they the responses on the right side have to be similar. So um, it you have to know exactly what the definition is of the term to know which one is correct. So uh, so in the also you also need to have one at least one more answer than you have questions to avoid the process of elimination. I've written that on many of your uh, test comments so far. Um, people are still struggling to make targets specific and measurable. Remember, you are creating them as if you were teaching the information in the handbook. You would not be teaching students to match items or fill in blanks or to evaluate uh, the commentary's instructions. <laughs> they're, they're the instructions. No one's going to evaluate them except the, the people who create them. Uh, many of you wrote, uh, great reasoning questions, mostly depicting teaching scenario and asking your classmates to evaluate using a specific set of rubrics. Remember, if you do that, tell the candidate which rubric to use. <laughs> it's not just giving a scenario and say, what level would you rate them? Well, well there are 15 rubrics. Which one should I use? Um, and, and please don't use the exact language of the rubric or it, it'll be a, it becomes a simple knowledge task. Somebody just goes in, it's, remember, it's open book. They just go in and say, oh, yeah, it's that. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, that, that's it right there. You know, describe the behavior that you're going to evaluate, not put in um, the exact rubric language. All right. Um, there are other ways to write reasoning questions. Uh, as well, but for now, it's important that you know it can be done. Um, this dispels the myth that re selective response tests only assess memorization. Some of you are going to say that when I challenge you in this coming uh, module's discussion board on Hard as the Dickens. Um, I will be giving you feedback on your draft SR test during this week. Be patient. I've already given it to almost everyone who's who's posted it. 
but don't submit your second draft, which is coming in a, in a future module, until you receive my feedback. So those of you who are going to post it on next Sunday night, <laughs> um, uh, you're going to have to wait to get feedback from your classmates and from me. So that's it for now. I will see you again. Um, I think I might post something next Monday, even between, um, uh, even though it's, yeah, I will be, I will be posting something next Monday, I think. <laughs> we'll see.